Hey everybody, how's it going? So a couple weeks back, I did that video about why you need to mic a speaker and I got a lot of great feedback. And a lot of it was along the lines of, hey, can you do more basic stuff? And you know what? I'm absolutely fine with doing that. So here you go. Here are five tips for recording metal guitar in your home studio. Now, I think the most common question I got was, why do I need a direct box? What I got here is a Radial J48 direct box. These are made by Radial Technology out of Canada. And they're great, you know, they're, they're rock solid, they sound outstanding, and they're built like a tank and will last you a lifetime. But the question is, why do you need one? Why can't you just use the direct ins on your sound cart? Simply put, this is a dedicated circuit. It's a huge honking transformer and it's gonna give you the best cleanest signal. Um, I love the radial stuff. I got the Countryman stuff as well back at Spectre. Both are spectacular for the application. They're only a couple hundred bucks and if you buy one, there's a good chance it will last your entire lifetime, probably longer than your sound card will. Now, the other thing to take into account is that there is an input which and an output here that goes to your XLR and your mic preamp, gives you a super clean signal, but there's also a through connection. And what that allows you to do is send the signal to a guitar amp. And if you're like me, this is great for a safety net, which allows you to record a dry track, a DI track coming straight off your pickups, right alongside your amp track, which you have mic'd up. Hypothetically, anyway. And then that allows you to reamp later down the road in case you're not happy with the sound you've got. The reamp has saved my ass numerous times over the years, and I tend to get a little OCD about reamping when I get into it. Needless to say, yes, our, a direct box is a sound investment if you're recording at home. Uh, you're definitely not going to go wrong by getting one. Like I said, I recommend the, the radials and the Countryman's. Um, they're both spectacular units. Go get one. Now, I'm gonna take a wild guess that the most of you guys out there are recording on amp sims. You know what, I'm gonna make that a poll. Are you recording on amp sims or real amps? I'd love to know, please click one or the other, let me know. And if you are recording on amp sims, yeah, you know what, your sound card's input will probably do you fine, but like I said, the direct box will probably last longer than your sound card will. So keep that in mind and it will probably give you a better quality signal than the direct in on your sound card. But then again, the results might be minuscule. It really depends on how far you want to take things. I don't think anybody's ever been steered wrong by getting a quality direct box. Okay, so next up, somebody asked uh, why I put foam behind the nut. And that's just basically to absorb noise. These, uh, the strings keep vibrating past the nut. And if you're using a high gain amplifier, like in a metal tone, chances are you're gonna pick it up here. Um, I've been doing this since about 2001, 2002. I remember I had a session, I was working with a band called Pitbull Grin. They had these uh, nice Ibanez guitars and whatnot, but they were playing an early form of what later probably evolved into what you guys would call gent. I'm not saying they invented it, but it was very staccato and a lot of starts and stops and whatnot. And every time they, there was a rest, you know, I hear this little, little wing, wing. I'm like, what the fuck is that? You know, and after two hours of gnashing our teeth and trying to figure out just what the hell was going wrong, um, it turns out the strings were vibrating on the other side of the nut. So we jam a little bit of foam in there and clean things right up. So I've been doing that on most of my guitars ever since. Now, uh, Rudy Ayub's going to demonstrate this is that if you're playing dad rock, uh, this little trick really does not apply. But if you are playing full on crunch metal, chances are you're probably going to want to put a little bit of foam here to clean up the sound during the rests. Even if you're manually gating all the stops, you don't really want these singing away uh, as you're playing. Some people will say, oh, well, that's just gonna kill the tone, but I'm gonna show you guys a clip here with and without the foam just to show you the differences.
Now, we didn't get a lot of the after ringing, and I don't know if that's Rudy's technique or the fact that Old England just built an awesome guitar, but um, when I play, it's a little bit more pingy than when Rudy plays, so keep that in mind. The best solution for you is to experiment. I mean, like, put a little foam behind the nut. Certainly can't hurt. It's definitely worth trying out. But in this case, I don't think it really affected the tone negatively by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, next up, I stole this idea from the film A Year and a Half in the Life of Metallica. It was a documentary on them making the Black Album, and um, th that disc is just loaded with all kinds of amazing studio tricks. If you pay attention, you can steal a lot of great information there. Bob Rock was definitely a man ahead of his time. Black Album still, in my opinion, one of the best produced records of all time. But I remember they're doing like harmony runs on Wherever I May Roam, and I noticed they had a lot of the strings taped off. And this is something I've used quite a bit in the studio over the years, is just if you're, you've got some intricate lead bits playing and you find the other strings are flapping in the breeze and adding a lot of noise, that you can tape those off in the parts that you're not using and it will just clean up your overall sound. Think of it as like almost like a capo type mute. If I'm playing up the neck here, I'll try and tape off somewhere up around here and also try and tape off the strings up here uh, that I'm not playing just to keep them from flapping in the breeze. Again, lower gain guitars, this isn't really a big issue because the pickups aren't gonna pick everything up, but the more you crank that gain up, it's gonna pick up everything. So uh, once again, Rudy's gonna show us how this works in an A-B situation. Of course, I don't have Rudy's finesse, so when I play, it's a fucking total mess, and I definitely have to tape off my strings, but you know, I think that goes to say something about his technique. Well done, dude. Next up is pick hard. Uh, I can say this, I've watched guys like Ola England and even Zach Wilde you know, play guitar, and these guys have you know, just amazing tone, and these guys just beat the shit out of their strings. I mean, like, their, their right hand pick attack is so strong, especially Zach, and I've always loved his tone. He's just absolutely killing his strings. And what we got here is a clip of picking soft too hard to show you exactly what's going on. Now, obviously the hard pick is far more aggressive, but there's something else to bear in mind. When you crank a gain knob up on a guitar amp, you're also increasing bottom and mud. So if you're picking harder, there's more signal going to the amp. It's almost like you're making an overdrive pedal out of your right hand. And if you pick hard, that makes the louder signal, meaning you can turn the gain down to get an overall cleaner sound. So if you're picking kind of light, you should probably be trying to learn how to pick as hard as humanly possible, at least on the rhythm parts anyway, and see how that works out for you. Do some A-B comparisons on your own and see what happens. And of course, uh, the type of pick matters, and I'm not gonna tell you what works best. It really is kind of dependent, but I do have some slow motion shots here to show you what's going on with a hard pick. versus a soft pick.
You can see the hard pick basically moves the strings out of the way, whereas the soft pick has a lot of give and it's moving out of the way with the strings moving a little bit less. So you're probably gonna get much more of a cleaner signal going into the amp with a harder pick. So keep that in mind, hard pick, and pick as fucking hard as you probably possibly can without knocking the guitar out of tune. And you're probably gonna get some really cool results. Now, just one other thing I wanted to bring up before we wrap it up here. This is like your, uh, the bonus tip, um, tip 5A, if you will. Uh, that is, please practice amplified. If you're going to be recording metal guitars, like I said, there's going to be strings flapping out of the breeze and things need to be taped down. You're definitely going to have to develop finesse. Recording is a whole different ball game than jamming with your buddies. Everything has to be much more precise. Everything has to be controlled. And if you're sitting at home just jangling away like this, you're not going to hear the subtle movements of the other strings and develop the proper muting techniques you're going to need to control that. So when you go into the studio or you go to record yourself and you crank that gain up, you're gonna go a whole bunch of sounds that you don't want along with the sounds that you do want. So practice hard at learning how to control the guitar with all that gain. All right, that wraps it up for this one. If you guys have comments, questions, or suggestions for other tutorials, please leave them below. I love hearing from each and every single one of you. And until next time, don't let making records make you crazy. Hey guys, if you liked the video, be sure to subscribe as I post every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. If you want to learn more about recording, check out one of my tutorials or one of my gear reviews if you want the actual honest truth about a piece of equipment. Till next time, stay metal, my friends.